Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Trust plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I wanted to do a short video, um, not so much a tutorial this time, but a video specifically relating to complex roofs. And the reason why I'm doing this video is I wanted to follow up with uh, some discussions that were had over um, uh, in a live session done with Aaron Dietz and with SketchUp. Um, and that video, actually, I'll, I will post a link to it in the in the chat below. But anyways, um, to begin with, when we talk about complex roofs, usually, you know, we're not talking specifically about these four wall structures. We're talking about more complicated structures where you have many roof planes. And, you know, this is kind of a typical sort of situation you might encounter. Um, here is actually the actual wall profile or perimeter that defines uh, that structure. And then here's a roof that I want to talk about a little bit. So, <clears throat> uh, the reason why I want to bring this up is because currently the complex roof module of the uh, Medique Trust plugin has one specific limitation, and that's kind of what I want to get into. So the limitation, uh, well, let's let's talk first about this this situation here, where basically you have what what I call a common or continuous facial line. So I'm going to go ahead and unhide. Uh, the geometry here for the roof and as you can see I'm going to turn this here off um, as you can see this is generated by the complex roof module and you know it doesn't have too much problem generating that uh, roof um, now like I said it has a continuous fascia all the way around it and what that means basically is that the vertical <clears throat> uh, I guess vertically the fascia is constant the entire way around the perimeter of this roof, right? You can see there's an overhang here and you can see the rafter tails projecting. I didn't trim the rafter tails, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's basically continuous and that means vertically it does not change all the way around this entire roof. And right now currently, uh, you know, the Trust Plugins complex roof module can handle this situation and this is and this is okay. Now I'm just going to turn off the sheathing real quick and you know show you the rafters as well that are generated. Um, <clears throat> so one other limitation that I'm still working on and actually the reason why I haven't gotten any farther on it is because I want to address the limitation of, of what's called a non-continuous fascia. So uh, but as you can see uh, all the rafters are drawn and uh, jack rafters what is not and the ridge boards of course but what is not drawn here is the uh, hip and valley rafters. So I still have that to add into the framing algorithm. And the, the red tinted color you're seeing here is the uh, hidden roof layer. So I can turn that off and you can really get a view of those rafters and how they're drawn. Um, and yeah, and it does a pretty good job. Um, you know, there's still a few things I'm gonna have to work on, but pretty much most of the framing is there. Um, you know, the sheathing's there, uh, the cladding's there. Um, and even we even have the gutters, I think, here somewhere. Let's see, take a look. Yeah, we can turn the gutter on. Okay, <clears throat> so, yeah, continuous all the way around, no problem. We can draw that. However, exact same perimeter, but now what's happened is if you take your walk around this, and there's no overhang, John, didn't draw the overhang. I manually drew this just to show you. Um, but I didn't draw the overhang just for clarity. So as you walk around, you get to this point right here in this corner. And notice now how we've essentially dropped the fascia line down, or actually the wall, I guess, really. Um, but there's a discon discontinuity here, right? And then it continues on at this level, wrapping around. And then right here, it jumps back up to that original height. Okay, then we keep walking ourselves around this here uh, roof. And now we're jumping up two feet. And then walk around some more. And then right here, we jump back down to the original height. So basically, if you look at this roof here and compare it to this roof, and you, you can see just by looking at the roof primitives, what the difference is here. Let's turn off this, all the, all the other little accoutrements here. Um, <clears throat> let's turn off the raptors, the sheathing, the cladding. What else? Um, and I want to turn on the hidden, actually. Roof framing. There's a lot of layers here. I apologize. Um, it's just... 
Okay, so we want the hidden layer turned on. Okay, there, that's good. Just so we have the very simplistic. Uh, and by the way, <clears throat> with the complex roof module, the roof hidden layer contains the, what I call the primitive, the solid that's created by the plugin. Um, and I use this solid to help with generating other aspects of the roof, but it actually creates a solid. And you know, you can use this solid to help you with, you know, other, whatever you need to do with that roof. So, but yeah, I mean, they look, they look pretty close, but you can see that by changing, um, stepping up and stepping down, it does affect uh, the overall uh, roof geometry, right? The roof planes get altered. Like if you look at this plane right here and this plane, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but there's this plane right here, um, this plane right here, and then you compare that to the other plane on the other roof, and yes, it, it is different because of uh, changing up uh, these facial uh, lines. So I guess what I'm trying to say is um, the, right now, currently, when you have a, a non-continuous facial line, um, that is a limitation of the complex roof uh, module. I'm trying to basically make my algorithm, I guess, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, my programming, my code, a little more general so that it can handle these step up and step downs. And that's kind of where I'm stuck at the moment. I'm trying to get this figured out, but I need, it does, you know, it does make it quite a bit more complicated, but you know, this is complex roof. So um, it's kind of is what it is, but, um, but you can see you, you get this situation where you have one roof kind of passing over the other and then tying back in. And then here with the outside corner, you get what I call kind of a raked, um, kind of a raked end, right? It's almost like a hip or a, uh, like a Dutch gable or half hip type situation where it, it rakes up and then it goes to the new level. So notice the same thing going on here. You got this kind of half hip going on. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of what I'm looking at right now, working on that algorithm amongst other things, of course, but that's a limitation of the complex roof module. So this roof right now, um, I, I, you know, the complex roof module cannot model it simply because you have these discontinuities. So what I'm planning on doing eventually is having, you know, basically you'll initially build your roof and then somehow we'll have a situation or a feature that allow or tool that allows you to select the different uh, perimeter lines and you can either drop or bring those up um, and then you can create those um, fascia lines that are not part of the original fascia line and then have the roof regenerate and basically give you this. Again, um, just going over here to a couple more simple models. Uh, same thing going on. You can see the same pattern. Here we have an inside corner. You kind of have these, I don't know, I almost call it a staggered valley, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. But you basically have a situation where this roof plane passes over this roof plane and then this roof plane terminates with this kind of angled uh, section. And then, of course, here you kind of have this half hip situation going on. Um, but, you know, when you, if you remember, if you look at um, Aaron Dietzen's live stream uh, just done here recently on Friday, I think it was, um, you know, he was talking about complex roofs where you have this sort of situation. But he demonstrated a couple examples where, you know, like a piece like this where you had a discontinuity. And a piece like this, you know, you can model as a different section. Like if it's this, if it's just, you know, three sides and it's up or down, then yeah, it, it's it's possible to kind of break that up piecemeal and then model that. But when you have a situation like this, or even this more complicated situation here, it's really not easy to just, you know, break up this roof in any chunks because it's just, it doesn't lend itself to that. So anyways, um, yeah, just wanted to talk about complex roofs and the current uh, state of where I'm at and and why I've kind of hit, an, I wouldn't say a roadblock, but it's just a, a situation here now where I want to program this thing so it can handle the most general case possible. And again, here's two other little, very simple roofs, really. But, you know, you've got um, a half hip going up and kind of this half, you know, where we've dropped this and now you've got kind of a 
half a half hip on one side and half a half hip on the other. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really interesting when you start looking at these roof planes and trying to understand them conceptually and figure out how to deal with them. So yeah, I, like I said, this, this particular uh, more complicated situation, the current state of the complex roof module in the truss plugin, it will not be able to successfully model that. So that is the, uh, really that's the next step. Anyways, uh, if you have any questions specifically on this or would like to add a little feedback, uh, please comment on in the comment section of the video below. And again, I appreciate everyone and their support. Thank you.